9.1 is here, and I bet you really want to know how the melee DPS meta will shape up in Season 2. Well, we have an answer for you. Warriors are no longer the best melee DPS in the game, but who is? Today, we will be answering all of your questions about melee in Season 2. We consulted with some of the best pro players in the world to give you our predictions on the new meta. So if you want to know if Windwalkers still pump or if Outlaw Rogue still sucks, be sure to stick around because we will be taking a deep dive into 9.1 patch. And just a huge disclaimer, this tier list is pure speculation based on patch notes and PTR testing alone. We will have to see how the game fully develops before we get a complete picture of the 9.1 meta. But before we get into it, we have a quick question for you guys. What do you think was the most broken melee in Season 1? Was it Red Paladin, Arms Warrior, or Feral Druid, or maybe something else? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you're looking to increase your rating this season, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com slash wow. Over the years, we have seen people go from challenger to gladiator all by implementing the lessons we teach in our videos. In fact, we are so confident in your results that we offer a six month money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating after using our site. Our class courses teach you the fundamentals you need to master your class in PvP, and we have hundreds of exclusive commentaries featuring matchup breakdowns directly from the best players in the world. You'll also gain premium access in our Discord server where our team of pros respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you're serious about improving. Starting off the S tier is Feral Druid, which has the potential to be the absolute best spec in the game next season. If you haven't already heard by now, Feral Druids will be getting a healing reduction effect through a new PvP talent called Wicked Claws. This will cause their infected wounds to apply a 10% healing debuff on the target, stacking twice. This is by far one of the most game-changing additions to the patch, since Feral Druids are already one of the best melee DPS specs in the game, and now with the Mortal Strike effect, they will have even more comp options. There were some other changes to existing PvP talents, but none are nearly as important as this new healing reduction effect. Ferals were on the receiving end of some nerfs, however, as hybrid healing was reduced for many melee specs this patch. Regrowth had its healing reduced by 15%, which will help rein in broken off heals due to talents like Strength of the Wild. Some of their defenses were also nerfed slightly, with Frenzied Regeneration and its well-honed Instincts conduit getting toned down a bit. For Necrolord Ferals, Ooze's Frictionless Coating is also now reduced by 50% in PvP, and these three nerfs together will help address the issue of Feral Druid's survivability right now, which was a bit problematic in Season 1 due to the strength of their off heals. Despite these nerfs, Feral is still looking incredibly promising. It will still be exceptional in the damage and healing department, and now with a healing reduction effect, it might slowly creep past other melee DPS. Joining Feral on the S tier is Arms Warrior, which is moving down from the S plus tier since our last update. Honestly, Warrior didn't see that many significant changes in the patch. Overpower and Execute Damage was buffed by 10%, and Overwatch PvP talent was removed and replaced with a relatively uninspiring Warbreaker charge. So what justifies the move down to S tier, you might ask? Well, for one, 9.1 is dramatically ramping up the amount of healing reduction effects in the game, making Mortal Strike and Sharpened Blade comparatively less valuable since they are no longer unique. Hematoxin from Rogues and Unleashed Shield from Restoration Shamans can now compete with Sharpened Blade. The overall defensive toolkit of Arms Warriors is still incredibly strong, having most of their Season 1 utility intact with the loss of Overwatch being their only defensive change. Intervene, War Banner, Rallying Cry, Disarm, and the Spell Reflection Legendary will still be just as strong in 9.1 as they were last patch. But since so many classes will have Mortal Strike and a reworked PvP talent system, Warriors were left out of any major changes this patch, so now they will be more in line with some of the other DPS specs in Arena. Staying on the S tier in Season 2 are Rhett Paladins, who might have one of the most broken PvP talent options this season. Judgments of the Pure is a newly reworked PvP talent that causes Judgment to dispel one magic effect from party members within the range of their auras. While this might seem insane for breaking CC, consider that it also works through Line of Sight and interacts with Divine Toll, and might even work with a new legendary called Divine Resonance. The new talent came with the rework of existing PvP talents, including a slight nerf to one of their primary options called Aurora of Reckoning and a redesign to Lawbringer which will make target swapping a bit more seamless in 9.1. One of the biggest changes though was to the Healing Hands PvP talent, which was enabling Rhett to do massive healing with Word of Glory. It was nerfed in 9.1 from 70% to 50%, once again in an effort to rein in hybrid healing for Season 2. A minor change also included a nerf to the combat medication buff from their Pelago's Soulbind. 
This was just one of the many damage modifiers from Season 1 that caused massive damage with cooldown stacking, but this will likely be offset by the recent addition of the newfound Resolve Soulbind ability added this patch. And rounding out the S tier for Season 2 will likely be Frost DKs, which will be moving up the tier list since our last update. Anti-Magic Zone was nerfed a bit this patch, but that was a result of its relative power in PvE and won't really change its effectiveness in PvP. One of the biggest changes in 9.1 was the introduction of Strangulate as a PvP talent option for both Frost and Unholy. Previously a blood-only talent, this will give DK's insane value in multiple comps as having a ranged silence effect is a really unique mechanic in PvP. 9.1 will be giving DK some additional tools against casters specifically, including a new Spell Warden PvP talent. And although Heart Stop Aura was removed from Frost, taking its place is a new PvP talent called Bitter Chill, which will reduce haste of enemy targets affected by Chains of Ice. This, along with a buff to Pillar of Frost and Breath of Sindragosa, will make DKs incredibly scary. Even right now without these damage buffs, Frost is able to do really high burst damage with Chill Streak. Windwalker DK setups were scary in Season 1, but expect them to be even more lethal in Season 2. Shroud of Winter is a new PvP talent that will decrease the range of spells on targets within 8 yards. This might be sleeper OP in some matchups, specifically in mages and druids, as it will completely throw off the range of CC spells like Polymorph and Cyclone. Moving up to the S tier this patch, we have Assassination Rogue, who might be on the cusp of being absolutely broken this season. Rogue's got some general class changes, including an increase to faint duration and a bug fix to serrated bone spike. Assass Rogues were already good in the previous patch, having some of the highest sustained damage in Arena and being one of the best specs in the game in 2v2. The Rogue class as a whole got a few redesigns to existing PvP talents, including a buff to maneuverability and the addition of Dismantle as a baseline option for both Assass and Sub Rogues. One of the most exciting additions for both specs is also Thick as Thieves, which will give Rogues a more classic feeling tricks of the trade. Having a reliable disarm effect will be huge for rogues in Arena, where they are incredibly vulnerable to getting trained by other melee classes. This will offset a nerf to Ooze's frictionless coating and to the Cloaked in Shadows conduit ability, both of which are important to assassination rogue defense. A new PvP talent called Hematoxin was added in 9.1, granting 40% healing reduction to targets affected by Shiv. This essentially gives them a form of sharpened blade and will be a massively beneficial complement to their insane DPS output. Overall, Assassination will be one of the best pure damage specs in Season 2. Moving up from the B tier since our last update are Survival Hunters, who might be a sleeper OP spec this season. Survival is getting some pretty significant damage increases to some of its primary damaging abilities, possibly allowing it to compete with the raw damage of BM. On top of that, there was a massive overhaul to Hunter PvP talents with the addition of a new ability called Tranquilizing Darts, which will cause your muzzle or trank shot to reduce the duration of buffs on the target by 4 seconds. If you manage to muzzle and trank shot back to back, you can completely strip a target of Resto Druid Hots, for example. Chimeral's Sting also looks promising as it will chain a 90% slow into a 3 second silence and finally a 20% healing debuff when used on enemy targets. These buffs will be super important for the viability of survival this patch, but perhaps more importantly, they will continue to have Mending Bandage, which might have massive value if Feral Druids and Assassination Rogues become incredibly popular in Season 2. Unfortunately, Enhancement Shamans are seeing some downward movement on our tier list, dropping from S to A since our last update. Two new PvP talent options are being added for the spec, but are relatively uninspiring. Static Field Totem is more or less a gimmick that creates a circular zone around a totem that cannot be escaped unless you kill the totem, which is pretty easy to do. Seasoned Winds, on the other hand, will definitely see some play in some matchups, especially against Shadow Play, as it will cause your Wind Shears to reduce spell damage taken from the Interrupted Spell School, effectively giving you 15% damage reduction if you continuously land Interrupts. Enhancement received a major healing nerf in 9.1 that contributes to its downward movement on our tier list. Healing Surge was reduced by 20% in PvP, adding to the nerfs to hybrid off healing across the board. Overall, Enhancement Shamans will still be good, but this key nerf to off healing without any major buffs to compensate will make them fall a bit behind in the meta compared to last season. 
The Cinderella story of 9.1 is definitely the rise of unholy DKs who are moving up from rags to riches this season. Just like Frost, unholy will now have Strangulate as a baseline PvP talent while having its entire talent system reworked. The class-wide changes include a new option called Spell Warden, granting 100% effectiveness to Rune of Spell Warding. Another new addition is Death's Echo, which will cause Death's Advance, Death and Decay, and Death Grip to have one additional charge. As far as unholy exclusive PvP, PvP talents are concerned, Necrotic Strike was reworked into an entirely new mechanic called Necrotic Wounds, which will function as a stacking healing absorption on enemy players while also acting as a self-heal for the Death Knight. And finally, Windwalker Monks will be rounding out our A tier, keeping them at the same relative power level since last patch. Windwalker really got the short end of the stick with this patch, as aside from a few bug fixes, it really doesn't have many changes going into Season 2. Although it wasn't documented in the official patch notes, the spec has two new uninspiring PvP talents. Windwalker is simply a movement speed increase that can stack on your teammates, and Perpetual Paralysis is a really niche option that allows your Paralyzed to spread to two nearby enemy players, which might see some play against melee cleaves. And that's really it for Windwalker. Aside from a covenant-wide nerf to combat meditation, the spec really didn't see any meaningful changes. So while other specs are moving up and down the tier list with new tools, monks remain unchanged in the meantime for Season 2. Taking a small fall from grace to the B tier this season are Subtlety Rogues. The spec did see some damage buffs to Backstab and Gloomblade, which seem nice on paper but really don't affect their balance much in PvP. Most of their meaningful damage comes from Shadow Strike and Eviscerate, with Backstab really only acting as a damage filler in between setups. Just like Assassination, Sub Rogues will be getting Dismantle as a baseline PvP talent, which will definitely help with their fragility into melee cleaves. This comes along with an entire rework to the existing talent system, which is where things get a bit interesting. One of the biggest changes punishing rogues into Season 2 is the removal of Cold Blood as a PvP talent and a nerf to Shadowy Duel, two things that were integral to their kill setups in Season 1. On top of that, Mark of the Master Assassin was nerfed in PvP, which might fundamentally change the way Sub is played since getting re-stealths for strong legendary openers was core to the spec in Season 1. Compensating these changes a bit is a cooldown reduction of Smoke Bomb from 3 minutes to 2 minutes for Sub only. This might help offset some of these offensive nerfs a bit and give Sub some additional team utility. One final change that will likely affect the 2's meta is a change to the Cloaked in Shadows conduit, which previously put an infinite duration shield on the Rogue while stealth. The shield absorption got buffed, but now only lasts 4 seconds. This will help prevent some of the endless stealth resets that are common against Rogue Mage setups in 2v2. Shifting away from rogues for a bit, there were also some nerfs to fire mages, which hurts the viability of sub as a whole since RMP was by far their strongest comp. We will be covering caster DPS changes in our next video, so be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tier lists for 9.1. Rounding out the V tier are Demon Hunters, who got some really interesting buffs and PvP talents this patch. The spec as a whole received a bunch of damage buffs, including a 15% increase to Demon's Bite, Demon Blades, Chaos Strike, and Annihilation, as well as a 1 second buff to the duration of Netherwalk and buff to Soul Rending which are super minor buffs to their overall defense. These changes come along with an overhaul to their PvP talents, with Havoc receiving the most changes of any spec by far this patch. Highlights include the removal of Eye of Leothris and Mana Break from the PvP talent rotation. This comes with some new options called Blood Moon and Chaotic Imprint, which will be flexible selections against specific caster setups. And Glimpse and Isolated Prey have also been added as new PvP talents, and will be more general options into a wide range of comps. One of the biggest changes was the buff to detainment to no longer increase the cooldown of Imprison. This will help it line up better with instant cast CC from other classes, most notably Shadow Priest. Darkness was both nerfed and buffed, becoming a baseline 50% damage reduction, but unfortunately changing the cover of Darkness talent to no longer increase its maximum AoE damage reduction to 70%, but instead only increase its radius. Although not mentioned in the official notes, DH also got a rework of its healing reduction effect, with the PvP talent called Mortal Dance tying in a 25% MS effect to Blade Dance. Previously tied to Fell Rush, this will make it easier to keep a healing reduction effect on targets now that it works with a primary damaging ability. 
While these changes overall seem nice for Havoc, the core problems of the spec aren't really addressed by this patch. Their biggest vulnerability has been their fragility in PvP, being one of the squishiest DPS classes in the game when trained. Although having damage increases is a net buff to the class, the lack of reliable defenses will continue to haunt Demon Hunter into Season 2, especially with increased healing reduction effects from other classes. Finally, we have our last two specs moving up from trash to C tier, starting with Outlaw Rogue. Outlaw has been the least popular rogue spec for a while now, and has historically lacked many of the essential tools needed to be viable in Arena. 9.1 has completely redesigned their PvP talents, including some increased defensive options with the newly added Float Like a Butterfly and Enduring Brawler. This is at the expense of some old PvP talents being removed, but will be complemented with a moderate damage increase to Sinister Strike in PvP. Overall, these changes definitely help the spec, but right now it's hard to see anything other than Sub or Assass being the primary build for PvP in Season 2. Fury is the final spec on our melee tier list, getting removed from the trash bin since our last update. Many people were hyped that Fury was finally getting a healing reduction effect with the new Slaughterhouse PvP talent, but unfortunately the hype has died down quite a bit after a bit of testing. This talent will cause Rampage to reduce healing by 15% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 4 times. While this seems amazing, with a 60% total healing reduction, the likelihood of getting and maintaining a 4 stack is almost impossible, since its rage cost of Rampage is incredibly high. This unfortunately makes Fury more of a gimmick, lacking the consistency that ARMS offers in PvP. All in all, Fury will remain a niche pick for those who are tired of playing ARMS and want a novel PvP experience. Overall, this is looking like a really good season for melee DPS. Feral Druids, Arms Warriors, and Ret Paladins will continue dominating much of the meta during Season 2, but will be joined by Assassination Rogue and Frost DK in the S tier. Survival Hunter might be the dark horse of the patch, getting some huge damage increases and having a direct counter to some of the best melee specs. Unfortunately, Sub Rogue has been moved down to the B tier after some key nerfs to many of its offensive options, but it will probably still be viable in comps like RMP just due to its role as the control king in Arena. Fury and Outlaw might be slightly more popular this season, but don't expect to see a complete takeover on the latter, since they are still comparatively weaker than the competition. And there you have our melee tier list predictions for Season 2 of Shadowlands. The game will be changing quite a bit, so it will take some time for the meta to completely develop. Once again, if you're looking to improve your rating this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, because we will be updating all of our class courses for the new patch. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give us a like and subscribe with all notifications turned on. That way you will never miss an upload. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.